Hello, is UKIP in safe hands? Part three. If you remember, is UKIP in safe hands? Part one and two. I raised my suspicions regarding Henry Bolton working with the security services and his aim was to destroy UKIP. And lo and behold, what happened? Well, exactly. All under the guise or the cover was the a love affair that went toxic and wrong with bogus model Joe Marley. That's what they do, the security services. It's not blatant disruption where you can see it. It's under the cover of something like, like I've said, the uh, the love affair with this um, Joe Marley, which hit the press and his estranged wife was uh, left holding the baby or whatever. And it didn't look good and... It was going to tear the party apart, apart. He wouldn't resign. Eventually, I think he was just, he had a new leadership challenge and he was booted out and he's formed his own party. One Nation, again, to undermine UKIP. And everything I said about that man, former captain was he in the army, former copper as well, Christ, you want a copper, always a copper. You can never trust them. Uh, everything I said about the man came true, didn't it? Of course it did, right? Is UKIP in safe hands part one? I raised my suspicions. And by the time I done, is UKIP in um, safe hands part two? Is obviously what the man was doing. He was there to destroy UKIP. But under the cover and under the guise of a love affair that went wrong. That's how they do this. They're not going to do it blatantly and obviously. Like with Martin Webster when he destroyed the once mighty National Front. That was done under the cover of writing to this young boy or something. But they were all in it together in Mariner, Searchlight, and all of them probably. But anyway, that's another video in itself. So I was proven right once again regarding Henry Bolton. Now, Jared Batten is now the new leader. But I'm a bit concerned with you, Mr. Batten, and I'll tell you why. Why would the leader of UKIP, a mainstream political party that needs all the good publicity you can get given all the problems it's had of late, why would you be allowed to be interviewed by Tommy Robinson? Why was you at that day of freedom yesterday in Whitehall in London allying yourself with cranks, weirdos and sexual deviants like Milo Yiannopoulos? Count Duchek or whatever your name is with your flesh tunnels and face piercings that was teaching his pug out to seek heil on the internet. You've aligned and associated yourself with these crackpots, weirdos, and in most cases, in Tommy Robinson's case, MI5 snitches, which can, again, I'm sure it will, will be used by the media to attack you. Why would you do what you do? Nigel Farage wouldn't have done it. And on a final note, because I'm a busy man today, right? Everything I say always comes true. And one of them is the spies all gravitate together. They were all on that stage yesterday together, weren't they? Anne-Marie Waters, Christ, what an ugly woman. Christ, she is horrible, it's like a little gremlin. Oh, uh, Tommy Robinson, Count Duckegg, he's probably, as well as being an idiot, he's probably another one in the pay of hope not hate to make us look stupid, idiotic and whatever. Right? Then there's others where the jury's out, but at the very least, there's certainly people you don't want to be associated with. Raheem Kassam, he's wrote a book about Enoch Powell being right 50 years later and all that. You see, Mr. Kassam, on an historical level, your book's okay, but it's not going to help the movement, even though there isn't one, or uh, or cause, even though there isn't a cause, because you lots have hijacked it, perverted it and twisted it, but let's just say there is. Enoch Powell is a hindrance to us now, right? And I'm sure the powers that be know. His rhetoric of uh, civil war and rivers of blood and the black man with the whip hand, it's scary stuff, right? P the public doesn't want to know. Even though we know he was right, trust me, he's a thorn in our side now. Enoch Powell and before anyone says I'm committing blasphemy attacking this great man I'm not just think about it Nick Griffin if you're watching this you, you'll understand where I'm coming from he's actually a hindrance to us but by Raheem Kassam writing that book it's cemented his position in the movement cause as a good guy and it, again it gives them trust I don't know what it is um, I don't know what he's up to Raheem Kassam he's this Muslim that now uh, wants to defend Britain and yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're another one. I don't know. But your book, 
the, on an historical level, yeah, it's okay. You can write these big, but it's not going to help us. You see, the movements in cause, the National Front BMP being dead, that is, courtesy the BMP uh, uh, in particular, courtesy of Nick Griffin, but uh, the movements in cause has been hijacked now by all these deviants and weirdos and ethnics and dubious characters and out now and MI5 snitches like Tommy Robinson. It's been hijacked. Can you see what's happened to it? If you're watching this, Richard Edmonds or Nick Griffin or any other old British nationalist that know where I'm coming from, the movement cause has been hijacked, right? Taken down a road and twisted and perverted. It's not the old British nationalism, I remember. Maybe it's not meant to be. But what is it? what's its ultimate aim? What is the ultimate aim of all these people? Day of freedom and also... There is freedom of speech. I've just stood in an election on an anti-asylum ticket. No one come and silenced me or arrested me. But if you do stupid things and fall foul of the law, then you will be arrested, right? Jared Batten, the jury's out on you, but I'm watching you. And like I've said many times before, and I'll say again, all the spies gravitate together. And also, if you've just replaced Henry Bolton, to destroy UKIP, then you will be seen, you will be spotted because you're gonna have to deliver. You see, like I've said before many, many times, and I'll say again, before Theresa May, Vincent Price, can betray Brexit, she has to finish off UKIP first. That's what this is all about. Forget Tommy Robinson, he's not even worth doing videos about, or any of the, the rest of them for that matter. It's you, Kip, they want to bring down and destroy. And in the meantime, they'll keep all the angry heads, get them on these rallies and marches and maybe a, a punch up and whatever, which is more bad publicity for the anti-Islamic message cause, like with the Football Lads Alliance on the 19th of May in Manchester. They've destroyed a golden opportunity, Tommy Robinson included. We could have had candidates there where we could have been elected the same in uh, Dover, the Dover truckers, a golden opportunity squandered and destroyed by hope not hate spy Paul Pitt. Get all the angry edge down there and destroy that opportunity. That's what the enemy does. That's what the secret state does. Courtesy of its two criminal proxies. Hope not hate Nick Lowe's, Jerry Gable, State Land Magazine. Can you see now what's going on? Our movements and causes being hijacked by all these weirdos, ethnics, and out and out snitches. Jared Van. I'm watching you. Okay, thank you. Hello, I'd just like to correct something. I said before the Football Lads Alliance have destroyed a golden opportunity in Manchester. Sorry, I don't mean they've already uh, destroyed a golden opportunity. What I mean is they're going to on the 19th of May. Now, 99.999% of the lads going down there are good lads. Those running it will be working with the security services. They don't want a political solution. They want to get all the angry heads down to Manchester and have a big bust up with the left. And again, it just demonises the anti-Islamic cause and message. This is what the big boys in MI5 want, courtesy of its two criminal proxies. Hope not hate Nick Lowell's Jerry Gable's State Lab magazine. The only way you're changing things in this country is by voting the fuckers out. There is no other way. You can have all your marches, all your demos, and it's not going to change anything. You see, those, including Tommy Robinson, those controlling the Football Lads Alliance will be working with the security services. They know exactly what they're doing. They'll get everyone down there and there'll be a big punch-up. And that's what's going to happen. I understand a lot of young lads want to go down there and express their anger and frustration because they see no other way. But trust me, it's not the way forward, right? We've got to... Uh, approach this in a sensible, professional, political way. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is violence and then it gives the state eventually an excuse to bring in new legislation to silence us all, let alone all that day of freedom. There is freedom at the moment. But if the more violence continues on the streets, there's not going to be. And that's what this is all about. Tommy Robinson, all he's brought the table since June 9 is violence. Right? The Football Lads Alliance, like I've said, they're all well-meaning good lads, but you're being used and manipulated. So when I said the Football Lads 
Alliance have destroyed a golden opportunity. I don't literally mean they've already done it, but they're going to probably on the 19th of May. You see, how you know the security services are behind all these things, all these new outfits, even like the EDL, when they start off, there's thousands on them on the marches. It's the same with the football lads alliance. Now, that doesn't happen. I've been involved in politics since 1978. A new political party will start. You don't have hundreds, let alone thousands, tens of thousands on marches. It just doesn't happen. And that's how you know the security services are behind it. So, I understand you're going down there, but it's not the way. But I thought to correct myself. I didn't mean they've already destroyed it, but they're going to contribute in helping destroy it. As... as uh, did Tommy Robinson when he was down there. All the public will see was vi is violence and it doesn't matter who causes it. Okay, thank you.